So I wanted to make a video about floating point numbers because floating point numbers have always been important in computing, even more so nowadays with all these big AI models we hear about, FP32, FP16, FPS, floating point, 16-bit, 8-bit, 32-bit. So it's even now, they're an important thing to understand. But I realized that before I did floating point, really I should do fixed point, which is kind of the opposite to floating point. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about fixed point arithmetic, fixed point decimal numbers, and then in the next video, I'm gonna talk about floating point numbers. So if you wanna find out more, please, let me explain. Okay, so let's jump in and look at the difference between floating point numbers and fixed point numbers and how you use fixed point numbers. In fact, at the end, we're gonna calculate pi just using fixed point numbers. So what is fixed point? Well, here are some normal decimal numbers, like 1.234, 62.98. What's that? 59,563.0, so there's nothing after the point. 7.65533. Now, notice that the number of decimal places is different. In the first one, there are three decimal places after the point, after the dot. In the second one, there are two. In the third one, there's just one, which is actually zero. There are more in the last one. So the point, the dot, seems to jump about a bit. It's a floating point. It seems to float. It goes from one position to another. Now, fixed point numbers have the same precision always. The point is fixed and does not move. So 1.234, but also 62.980. They both have three numbers after the decimal point. 59,563.000. So even when it's zero, you still have to have three of them because the point is fixed, the precision is fixed. 7.655, again, three of them. All the numbers above have three decimal places. It's always there, always the same position it's fixed. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, the advantage of fixed point numbers, they are easy to use and implement, offer good performance when no hardware-based floating point instructions are available and are resource efficient, often used in embedded systems and microcontrollers where you might not have a FPU, a floating point unit. However, the disadvantages, the precision is fixed, it can't be changed at runtime and it can uh, easily lead to overflow or truncation so if you were trying to store very big numbers let's say like the you know the mass of the planet or something and very small numbers like the mass of an atom in the same number system then you're going to get problems because it can't cope with both of those things at the same time so let's look at some simple fixed point numbers now if you've got 4.2 plus 2.1 we know from uh, what we learned at school that's 6.3 but you probably know that 42 plus 21 is 63. Now, if we look at this, 42 is the equivalent of 4.2, but the decimal point has been shifted. 2.1 is the same as 21, and 6.3 is the same as 63, but uh, everything's been moved by 10. So with fixed point numbers, they're really easy to implement because if you just wanted one decimal point, you just do everything as 42 plus 21 gives you 63, but you realize that actually that's 6.3. So when you use it, when you print it out, you know that it's a factor of 10 out. We can do the same with two decimal points. So 4.24 plus 2.19 is 6.43. Well, actually, so is 424 plus 219 actually gives you 643. Just the decimal point has been moved, in fact, by a factor of 100. And this works with more than just uh, addition, you can hear subtraction, so 4.20 minus 0 0.11 is 4.09, well 420 minus 11 is 409, so it works exactly the same, and multiplication, 4.2 times 1.2, well, oh, well, what's that, how we go and do floating point, you know, how we do decimal point multiplication, well, well it's 5.04, but actually 42 times 12 is 504, so that makes it much, much easier, it's just a factor of 100 out. Now, one place it doesn't work is with division, so if you've got 5.00 divided by 2.00, that would give you 2.5, but 500, so you move this point, divided by 200, also gives you 2.5. So we haven't fixed anything there. We've got the same answer. So we're unhappy about that. So we need a way of expressing uh, rational numbers. So one fifth, three quarters, one half, one quarter, one eighth, so on, 
as a fixed point number. And to do that, we use a method called the decimal expansion of rational numbers. You may have learned that at school. It works like this. So if I've got one quarter, we know that's 0.25. You probably know that. One half would be 0.5. But how, how do we know that? Well, you take one, you divide it by four. That gives you zero remainder one. So it's zero point. Then you multiply the remainder by 10. So you've now got 10 rather than one. Divide that by four gives you two remainder two. So it's 0 0.2. And then you multiply that by 10. So the two becomes 20. You divide that by four, you get five remainder zero. So the answer is 0 0.25. So we've done the uh, decimal expansion of a rational number. And you can do that for any number. One over four, one over eight, three over eight, 12 over 16, you can do it for all of them and you get that decimal expansion. Now that number, 0 0.25, we can express using our fixed point uh, number system. Now, if you use a 64-bit unsigned integer, the maximum value of that is, well, 18 and, and all of those digits after that is a very big number. Actually, you could actually just make that a single digit with 18 decimal places, so 7 point four, four, six, seven, blah, 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 fill it all up. So, and the great thing is we've got 18 decimal places of precision. However, we can only store a single digit, seven, uh, eight, nine. After that, we'll get overflow. So this is part of the problem I was saying about fixed point numbers. Once you fix on a scheme, this is what this bit of code is gonna use. Then it's fixed to that and overflow can happen uh, relatively quickly. So here I've got a piece of code uh, that does fixed point decimal expansion and notice here two parameters of what's going to be divided by what are unsigned 64-bit numbers. So everything that happens in here is not using any floats or doubles or other things you might find in C. This is all just using integer uh, mathematics using these very big numbers and basically this will go through and it will convert 1 over 4, 12 over 16, whatever into a decimal number 0.0 but it will be stored in a 64-bit integer with a big factor of multiplication as we've just been talking about. Now before we go any further we also need to look at how do you output a decimal number. So if I want to print out 142 how do I do that? Well you take 142 divided by 10 that gives you 14 remainder 2 so you print out the 2. Take 14 that was the remain uh, what was the answer divide that by 10 you get 1 remainder 4 so you print out the 4. You take the 1, you divide that by 10, that gives you 0, remainder 1. You print out the 1, that gives you 142. However, I cheated here. The problem is that the numbers came out in reverse. Notice the 2 was printed first, then the 4, and then the 1. So the output was actually 2, 4, 1, not 1, 4, 2. Now, there are two ways of fixing that. You either output to a buffer, uh, a string buffer, and then reverse the string before you print it out, or you use recursion, which also handily fixes the problem rather than using a loop. So here I've got some code called print fixed point and this will take in a number in our in our fixed point format and it will print it out and the reason there's this second i here is because we're actually counting the digits uh, during the recursion and the very first one here just sends in a one there's no overloading in c not really so uh, we use this method to pass in the one by default and then we call it so anyway what happens is you get the remainder and the divide exactly what I've done and then if you haven't got to the end yet, you call it again. So you keep recursing around until you basically get to the beginning of the number. And then as you unwind printing them out, you're going to print it in reverse. That's the advantage there of recursion. So you go right to the end and then unwind printing uh, the reverse. We also print the decimal point when we've got to the right place. Uh, and this will allow us to take our uh, decimal numbers that are actually integers. And we've got the point in a fixed place. It will allow us to print those out. Now, a few weeks ago, I did the uh, Leibniz formula for calculating pi on pi day on, on March 14. If you remember, a quarter of pi is equal to one minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh plus a ninth and so on in an infinite series. It's worth noting, as I did then, that this has been found by uh, at least a couple of other people. So it does have different names uh, depending on when uh, you're referring to its discovery, just so that you're aware of that. So here is my code for calculating pi using a fixed point number. So these are the number of iterations I'm going to go through. I've got a function that will allow me to set an integer to a fixed point number. So this will multiply it by that factor. So it's 18 decimal places we were talking about. So that gets multiplied up. And then I go through the series here and I say is pi is equal to pi minus. And then I do the calculation of 1 over 3. And then I say pi is equal to pi plus and then I do the calculation of 1 over 5. 
and I keep going around doing that. And at the very end here, remember I can do multiplication, addition, all that very simply. I take pi, multiply it by four, print it out using our little function there that does the recursion, and I get the answer for pi using just integers using fixed point floating numbers. And if you run that, this is the answer you get. Okay, 3.141592, and in fact, you notice there, and this again, we discussed this in this last video I did about that, that's the accuracy you get after that many uh, iterations. 3.141592, so I've calculated pi to one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places without using any floating point mathematics whatsoever. Now, if you're interested in that code, you will find it in my GitHub repository. The easiest way to find it is just to type Gary Explains GitHub into Google or to Bing, and it will come up in the search results there. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. The next one is going to be about floating point numbers and how they differ from fixed point numbers and how we can do some interesting things uh, with those, decoding how they're stored inside of the computer memory. So if you're interested in that, do subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in that next video.